because I want to teach you how to interpret tongues. I really do. Yeah. It's actually very easy. When I speak in tongues, I don't speak to men, but to God. And in the spirit, I am uttering mysteries. Amen. Now, here's the problem. He said, when you speak in tongues, you're not praying. You are speaking. When you're praying in tongues, you are not actually praying. You're speaking. That is why many times when you notice when I'm prophesying. Now, I know prophets, prophets who use tongues to help in the prophetic, which is very easy, actually. All they do is when they say one or two words and they get stuck, then they interpret. They get the missing information. If you watch my father, you watch prophet, you but angel, major arrest prophet, you look at all these guys, they are powerful. They don't need to, but there are times they will speak in tongues. Why? Because if you interpret tongues, Depending on what you're doing, you're speaking to God and you're uttering what? Mysteries. What is a mystery? Can somebody go to uh, Google Dictionary? I want you to see definition. A mystery and then somebody else look up, look up what a secret is. Okay. You have the mystery? Come, 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 come. Since she's taking too long with the mic, come. No, 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 come. I want you to read. Um, something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. Ah, did you hear that? Say it one more time. Something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. Something that is impossible to understand or to explain. Now, Paul goes to the third heaven. He said, I heard things that should not be uttered by men. There is no language to utter it. Tongues speaks through God. I will explain this. You are saying things that human language cannot speak. But human language can express. So you don't speak to God in a mystery. No. Because there is no mystery to God. You are speaking mysteries. The problem is you have not decoded the mysteries. So that they benefit you. You are speaking them. So now they have come because you are speaking through God. Amen. The picture of prayer looks like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am before the Lord. And I am pleading my case before God. Who is seated on the throne. You can imagine this with, the, with, with, your, with your imagination. When I am praying... I see the throne of God and I see God seated. I see the seraphims around him. I see the 24 elders and I am at his feet pleading my case. That is prayer. Yes. Father and my father speaks to me. Speaking to God is not the kind of prayer that you are on your knees speaking to God in the spirit. Speaking to God is you have merged inside of God. You are speaking, but it is not you speaking. It is God speaking, yeah. but is using you to speak it. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes, Father. Yes. Thank you. you have joined because now you are speaking to God, but it is not like speaking to him. Yeah. You are literally the right language in the physical will be speaking through God. Amen. Yes. Not speaking by God because God is not the one that is making you speak. You are speaking through him because now you are engaging with him with your spirit and he's giving you the password. He's giving you the language to change your situation. But because you don't know how to interpret it, you are still complaining, God, you didn't answer me. Yes. No, I just gave you the mystery. Amen. How that boy got healed is a mystery. The doctor will say, wow, he recovered. We thank God. Do you think the parents traveled to come here because it was just something he was going to recover? 
No, they gave them bad news. Yes. 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 But the way he has recovered is a mystery. He just woke up and he's talking. Wait, what? Come on, thank you, Father. That is a mystery. Yes. How did it happen? Amen. But the mystery was expressed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I expressed it in the natural. Why? Let me tell you when the Lord taught me this. When I started the prayer group in my living room, it's the first time I ever did this. First time I ever did this. I would prayed for people to have children before, many times, and people had kids. But this was the first time this ever happened this way. I was praying for people in the living room. And I saw an Armenian woman. And when I looked at her, the angel of the Lord took a hold of my hand. And I saw visions of God. And I saw the woman pushing a boy on a stroller. I said, woman of God, you have no children. She was shocked. You have been married for three years. You're trying. I saw you pushing a baby boy. But when I saw the vision, I didn't want to speak. Do you know what the Lord told me? If you don't speak, it can't come to pass. God revealed to me a mystery. But the only way I unlock it is by speaking. Because the baby is no longer in the spiritual world if God has given me the mystery. All I have to do is to speak to the person. Call those things that are not as if they were. And I told her, leave right now, go home to your husband. Go and make the child. The child is already inside of you. Today that woman has a boy. Then there was another woman that the young boy came. He was about seven or eight or nine years old. I said, yeah, I'll take care of all his school and stuff. Same thing. I told the mother, leave now. Go. You have a boy. Leave the house. Go. Go now. Go make the baby. <laughs> it's no longer a spiritual issue. That has been solved. Now, you've seen me give people apples sometimes, but I don't always do that. In fact, in the house, I never did that at all. And even now, I don't always do it. I only do it if God tells me to. So, so understand this. Understand this. Understand this with everything that is inside of you. God has given you keys. But you have not understood tongues. Because anyone that can comprehend tongues has already entered into the prophetic. Why? Because it is a revelatory language. Most of the tongues people speak is not even tongues. It is in the flesh. Because you can all robo here in the flesh. I don't know who sent me that video. Was it Adriel or somebody? Send me a video of a, of a lady advertising a church. Saying, come to this church if you are in Houston, in this place. Oh, Rebe Shetebe, if you are here. Like, eh? He sent it to me. I thought it was a joke at first, but it was true. <laughs> Can we just invite people? You, do you get what I'm saying? That's actually the type of tongues, shalalahanda. But it's like, if you, if, if you hear that, it's cool, but you are, it is more sentimental. You are, in, you are in your sentiments, you are in your feelings. You may be genuinely genuine about God, but where that came from? There was no utterance, there was no mystery. How did it benefit people? You see, if I'm praying in tongues by myself, I don't need to interpret it. Because I know what I'm saying. But if I'm speaking in tongues, praying over people, I need to interpret it because if I don't, I didn't help you. I didn't release what should come on you. I may have received it, but you may not. Yeah. 
So interpretation of tongues, the Bible says the gift of interpretation. We have interpretation of dreams. Why? Because dreams are prophetic. There's interpretation of tongues. What? These are prophetic. Interpret interpretation of dark speeches of God. Symbols and signs. All these are prophetic things because God is trying to show you a mystery. But the language to give you is not readily available. It depends on your maturity. When you guys joined RISE, what was the first requirement I asked you guys to? To pray in tongues how many times, how, how, many, how many minutes every day? 20 minutes every day pray in tongues. Why did I tell you guys to do that? Because I wanted your capacity to be greater. I wanted your capacity to be greater. I wanted your understanding to be greater so that when I teach you some certain things and I don't tell you certain things, your spirit will pick it up immediately. You will know what you need to do without being told. Why? Because your spirit is already stretched out. You already expanded. You have the ability to contain and to hold more. Prophetic declaration is no prophecy. That is good wishes. The Lord will do it. It's just encouragement. The Lord will do it. He said, don't cry. He's going to lift you. That's encouragement. It's good. It's not God's speech. It is God's desire. You're expressing. Because God doesn't want anyone to cry. That's why he says, he shall wipe all our tears. It's comfort. Thank you, sir. But it is not what you want to turn things. It's not, and let me not rephrase that. It's not what you, you don't want. You want more than that so you can be a benefit. The first step into the realm of the prophetic is desire. When something becomes a desire, it consumes you. If it does not consume you, it's not a desire. It's a wish. Ah, you didn't hear what I just told you. A desire consumes you. You think it, you breathe it, you watch it over and over. You see yourself, you cry to God, Lord, take me. It has to consume you. Not wh Why? Because I want to benefit people. Amen. Not because I want to know things. Yeah. Not because I want to be seen. Yeah. Not because I want to be exalted. But because I want to bless people, I want to bring many, many souls to heaven. Amen. You imagine like the wife of the Muslim man in the church. I tell her about a dead baby that she lost. Because I saw her carrying the baby and the baby died. And I end up calling her husband's name. A husband's best friend. Even the name of the child they had named that went home. And then I told them about the business the guy was trying to do. How when God lifts it, he should know that Jesus is God, not a prophet. Lord. Amen. And that he should follow him. Uh, notice that it's different. It is compelling. You want to compel people to Christ. You want to pull people to Christ. Amen. You want the money. You know when people say, oh, there will be a showdown of prophets of God and prophets of Baal. Where is that showdown? <laughs> They've been saying this showdown for a long time. It's not happening. Your battle is not against other men of God <laughs> that you think they serve Baal. Go fight the devil. Yes. Go save souls from the world. Why are you caring what's happening in another church? That means you're not paying attention to your church. 
I could care less what another ministry is doing. It's not my ministry. If I see something wrong, I'll pray for them. But I don't even watch other pastors. I watch me. I watch my family. That's it. I don't really know what other people are doing. And even my brothers and sisters in the Lord, I don't really watch them. I may pass through, but I will never sit down and watch why. I am so consumed by what I have to do. What I have to do is the most... At the, when Jesus was preaching, he didn't care what the Pharisees were preaching, you know? Even though he knew they were not teaching right. He only told them, you're putting more burdens on these people instead of helping them in those burdens. Amen. He didn't preach about them. Amen. No. He told them to their face and moved on. And when he told them, the people around didn't even know what he was saying to them. Because the dignity of the house of God had to be maintained. Because Jesus himself went to those temples. So if he calls them false, what temple will he go to? Exactly. Amen. Jesus is the son of God. He's not given a temple. That's good, Papa. That's good. Are you getting it? Yeah, good. Be consumed with blessing the people you are with first. You can't be thinking of people so far away when the people around you haven't benefited. Today we will stop at desire. He said, uh. -huh. <laughs> because the next one, not in this one. Maybe in this one. Hmm. Because I want to teach you how to interpret tongues. I really do. Yeah, it's actually very easy. Uh, I'm going to give you um, some tips that will be extremely beneficial in understanding something. It will be very brief, but it will help you. There is a difference between interpreting and translating. To translate is to, is to convert one language to another exactly as it is written or as it is spoken. Now, the problem with translation or direct translation, as it is said, first of all, we have translation and then we have transliteration. These are forms of translation. And then we have direct translation. If we just do translation or direct translation the meaning of what was spoken will be lost why if i say let us go like let me use congolese kiswahili because the kiswahili of congo is very different from the kiswahili of kenya and the kiswahili of tanzania in congo people say Kuuza, which means to sell in proper Swahili. To them means to buy. So instead of said, or saying kununua, they say kuuza. I remember when I was a young boy and my cousins came to visit, and they told my mom, tunaenda kuuza bombo. I was actually, I cried. I said, mama, why are they going to go and sell candy? My mom was like, no, 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 no. They are not going to sell. They are going to buy candy. I said, no, you're lying. They said they are going to sell. She said, no, they use that word to mean to buy. So I was like, what do they use for buying? My mom said, get out of here. I already told you. <laughs> so you, you get what I'm saying. So if you don't understand the culture, you cannot interpret. Because when you're translating a language, in order for it to be understood, you have to interpret. Yeah. An example is if you watch a Chinese movie, it always has subtitles, but I bet you the subtitles are not telling you exactly what it's saying. It paints a story within what they're saying. They are interpreting, they are not translating. Because if you translate word for word, the language, the meaning of what is being said will be lost. 
you don't translate tongues. You don't translate dreams. You interpret them. Can you find me the writing on the wall? Neme, neme, something. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't translate. You interpret. Interpretation is driving the meaning of what was being said and expressing it in another language as it was said with the same feeling and the same emotion, with the same meaning, as close as you can to the original. That is why when you look at words, in, that's why pastors will preach and say, this word in Hebrew, it means this, and you're like, wow. Some people even treat it like revelation. No, it's not. You know, this word means uh, this, uh, to break forth, not just breakthrough, but to break forth. <laughs> I'm here to tell you you're breaking forth. That's not revelation. That's translation or transliteration and interpretation, right? So sometimes you need the language to be literal to carry the meaning, and sometimes you can't say it literally because it won't carry the meaning. The meaning will be lost, right? Now look at this. And this is the writing that was written, and it was God's finger that wrote it, right? Yeah. Mene, mene, tekel, and that word, afasin. <laughs> Verse 26. This is what? I can't hear you. The Not the translation. Yeah. Now watch how strange this is. Mene, God had numbered thy kingdom and finished them. Wait. That one word <laughs> meant all that. Come on. So you can't interpret it. You can only what? No, you can't translate it. You can only what? Interpret it. That, that one word can't mean all that. Come on. In the spirit, it makes even more sense than what he was expressing physically. Okay, look at the next one. And then I'll show you another one. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. So when you do, rako shatapala, you have said a lot. No, 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 you didn't hear what I'm saying. Leko shakataba, ritelebesha. If you even just got reke. You would change somebody's life. Uh, you didn't get it. <laughs> Do you see how deep interpretation is? Now you just think. <laughs> One. You have a get dolo bo shika. go do go do go. It's fine, I get it, it's stung because even mene mene. What is that? Are you getting it? Mene mene. You can add that in your own tongues. Talk to a demon. Mene mene. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> but, 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 but understand what I'm trying to say though. Understand, by the way, I'm joking, but hear me. <laughs> Am I? I don't know. But, <laughs> but hear me. <laughs> but me, hear me. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Just think about, the, okay, go to, go to where Jesus tells the young lady, Talita Kumi. Go to that. If you find it, Musa, please. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, he found it. Mark 5, 41. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talita Kumi, which is being... I can't hear you. Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Wait, come on, man. So that wasn't Hebrew. That was tongues. It's being interpreted. Not translated. Ah, uh, you didn't get it. But notice that. Talita kumi. Demzel, I say unto you, rise up. 
So who interpreted it? Because Jesus didn't interpret it. The eyewitnesses, the two apostles that were there, whoever was an eyewitness remembered the tongue that he used and he wrote the interpretation. But what was the interpretation? It's not because he understood Jesus' tongues, because when this happened, they didn't even speak in tongues. How did he know the interpretation? Because of what happened. And how he held her. He read the body language and the expression. Because every time Jesus raised people, he would say, wake up, rise up. No, they are just asleep. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm going to give you one fundamental way. Next time. Or we'll do just tongues another day. <laughs> okay, look at this. Look at this, Matthew 27, verse 46. Are you ready for this? Yes. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, 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 lama sabatani. This is to say, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken? This is to say, not this is what he was saying. This is to say, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Now, Jesus was quoting something that was written about him in the Psalms because he could not accomplish the cross until he says that. Then the Jews who are there were saying, why is he calling who? Elijah. Why is he calling Elijah to come and rescue him? It means they didn't understand what he said. And just remember, the early, early Lama Sabatani, it is to say, not this is exactly what he's saying. It is to say. It's a summary. Because you're noticing one word in tongues has a whole sentence. One line is a whole paragraph. So you are uttering mysteries, but you can't unlock it. Because one resha pata. You just spoke concerning 10 years of your life and you don't know. Are you getting what I'm saying? But we'll talk about... interpretation another time may god bless you until next time god bless you bye bye